Fact 1. Freddie Mercury and Smile lead singer Tim Staffel were friends. In the movie, we see Freddie introduce himself to Brian and Roger after Tim Staffel has left the band. In reality, Freddie and Tim were college friends, and it was actually Tim who introduced Freddie to Brian and Roger. Fact 2. Brian May dated Mary Austin. While the film focuses on the love story between Freddie and Mary, in reality, Brian May was actually going out with Mary before Freddie asked her out. Fact 3. John Deacon was not Queen's only bass player. Queen actually had three bass players before John Deacon joined the band. In the film, we don't really get introduced to John, he just sort of appears. According to actor Joe Mazzello, one of the film's deleted scenes shows how John joined the band. Fact 4. Queen's early years were a struggle. The movie presents Queen's early days as a quick rise from one success to another. However, this is far from the truth. Queen's first album was somewhat of a flop in the charts, and it took them four albums and five years together before they had a number one hit. Fact 5. Queen had already made three albums and appeared on Top of the Pops three or four times before meeting John Reed. In the film, John Reed is the man that makes it all happen for Queen, after he sees them recording Seven Seas of Rye in the studio, and gives them their big break by booking an appearance on British TV show Top of the Pops. In reality, by the time John Reed became Queen's manager, the band had already released three albums and appeared on the show three or four times. Fact 6. Queen's first appearance on Top of the Pops was for Seven Seas of Rye and not Killer Queen. While the band did play Killer Queen on Top of the Pops, it was their third appearance on the show. Their first appearance was a performance of Seven Seas of Rye, which they were booked for at the last minute after David Bowie pulled out. Fact 7. Queen's first taste of true stardom was in Japan. The band were amazed when they landed to a true rock star welcome for their first Japan tour in 1975, with over 3,000 fans waiting for them at the airport. Some of the deleted scenes from the movie were set in Japan, so it's possible this was one of them. Fact 8. Fat Bottom Girls was released four years later. In the movie, we see a montage of Queen's first US tour in 1974, as the band play Fat Bottom Girls. That song, however, wasn't written until 1978. Fact 9. Brian May almost lost his arm. While preparing for their first shows in Australia, Brian fell ill with gangrene. Apparently, it got so bad that at one point, he was at risk of losing his arm. Fact 10, Queen was screwed over by their first manager. By 1975, Queen had released three albums and had two top 10 singles in the UK, yet they still found themselves close to broke. Suspicions were aroused when the band's manager at the time, Norman Sheffield, had just bought himself a new Rolls Royce. After some investigation, it was discovered that due to the contracts Queen had signed with Sheffield, he would get almost all of the money Queen had made from their first three albums. Freddie would go on to write a song about this whole ordeal called Death on Two Legs, which had lyrics so vicious that Brian May felt bad singing them. Despite the fact the song doesn't mention Sheffield by name at all, he still sued the band for defamation. Fact 11. You're My Best Friend was written about John Deacon's wife. John Deacon's first single release, You're My Best Friend, would go on to become one of Queen's most recognisable songs, originally written by John for his newlywed wife. Fact 12. Bohemian Rhapsody was originally three different songs. When Freddie was writing Bohemian Rhapsody, he originally saw these sections as three different songs that he couldn't quite get to work. That was until he had the genius idea to put the three songs together to create the epic six minute track we're all familiar with. Fact 13. Roger locked himself in a cupboard until he got his song as a b-side. The song I'm in love with my car gets mentioned a number of times throughout the movie, but one thing that isn't mentioned is the story of Roger Taylor locking himself in a cupboard until the rest of the band let him have this song as the b-side to Bohemian Rhapsody. This one is more rumour than fact as this story has never really been confirmed by any member of the band. Fact 14. A Night of the Opera features Queen's longest song. While everyone talks about Bohemian Rhapsody's length at around 6 minutes, it wasn't even the longest song on that album. Brian's The Prophet song is not only the longest song on A Night at the Opera, but also is Queen's longest song ever at around 8 minutes long. Fact 15. The Bohemian Rhapsody video is seen by some as the first true music video. While other bands and artists including Queen themselves had done videos called pop promos in the past for shows like Top of the Pops, Bohemian Rhapsody is seen by many as the first real music video. Needless to say, this was a revolution for the music industry. Fact 16. Queen's concert in Rio took place 8 years later than in the film. In the film, Freddie and Brian play Love of My Life in front of a massive crowd at a Queen concert in Rio. And while Queen did play a concert in Rio in front of over 250 to 300,000 people, this concert actually took place in 1985, roughly eight years later than when it happens in the film. Fact 17, Queen played a free concert in front of over 150,000 people. In 1976, Queen played a free concert at London's Hyde Park. The place was packed with about 150 to 200,000 fans in attendance. Fact 18, We Will Rock You was released three years earlier. 
In the movie, the band is seen recording We Will Rock You in 1980. However, this song was recorded and released three years earlier on Queen's News of the World album. No point saying we will, we will rock you after we've rocked them all night long. <laughs> Fact 19, We Will Rock You was recorded using old wooden boards. Also in this scene, we see the band recording the iconic We Will Rock You sound by actually stomping and clapping on a stage. In reality, this sound was actually the band banging some old wooden boards on the ground and multi-tracking it to give it that stadium sound. Fact 20, Freddie had a run-in with Sid Vicious. While in the studio working on their News of the World album, Freddie crossed paths with lead singer of the Sex Pistols, Sid Vicious. When Sid tried to make fun of him, Freddie grabbed Sid by his collar and threw him out the door. Fact 21, Queen and John Reed parted ways amicably. One of the most dramatic scenes in the movie is when Freddie fires John Reed and throws him out of his limo after Reed suggests Freddie do a solo album. In reality, Queen and John Reed parted ways on good terms in 1978 after Reed decided he couldn't handle the workload of managing both Queen and Elton John. Fact 22, Freddie wrote Crazy Little Thing Called Love in the bath. One of the movie's deleted scenes shows the moment Freddie wrote the song Crazy Little Thing Called Love while in the bathtub. Fact 23, Another One Bites the Dust almost wasn't released. The band was split in their opinions of Another One Bites the Dust. While John and Freddie loved it, Brian and Roger weren't too keen on the song, even to the point where this song almost didn't make it onto the album. It was Michael Jackson of all people who heard the song and insisted they release it as a single. It went on to become Queen's highest selling single of all time. Fact 24, Freddie recorded songs with Michael Jackson. Freddie and Michael actually spent time together in the studio and recorded a few songs together, only one of which has been officially released. Released. It turned out to be a rather unusual experience though as Freddie caught up his assistant at one point desperately asking to leave after Michael brought a llama into the studio. Fact 25, the unusual South America tour. In 1981, Queen went on a South America tour that was a bit of a nerve wracking experience. At one point the band were being driven the wrong way down a motorway and to clear the traffic their guards would fire their rifles in the air. Fact 26, one of the more well known facts that wasn't covered in the movie is that Queen collaborated with David Bowie to create the number one hit Under Pressure. Fact 27, Queen and David Bowie worked on a second song together. While everyone knows Under Pressure, Queen and David Bowie actually worked on another song together. The song Cool Cat from Queen's Hot Space album originally featured Bowie on backing vocals. Bowie wasn't happy with his performance on the song and asked Freddie to remove the vocals. Fact 28, Queen made an almost entirely disco album. In the film, the guys have an argument about the band heading in a more disco funk direction with their music, and from this argument, Another One Bites the Dust is created. In reality, the massive success of Another One Bites the Dust led the band to create an almost entirely disco sounding album. While a lot of people see it as their worst album, it is rumoured that Queen's Hot Space album inspired Michael Jackson to create the Thriller album. Fact 29, Queen performed on Saturday Night Live. In 1982, Queen made their one and only appearance on Saturday Night Live. It turned out to be quite a stressful experience, as Freddie had blown out his voice in an argument the night before the show, and desperately spent the next day trying to get his voice back. Fact 30, Freddie wasn't the first to make a solo album. While the film focuses a lot on Freddie going solo, in reality, both Roger and Brian had released solo albums before Freddie. Fact 31, Queen didn't break up. The movie gives the impression that Queen broke up after Freddie decided to go solo. This couldn't be further from the truth. The band never broke up, and in fact, Freddie interrupted work on his solo album to go on tour with Queen. Fact 32, Queen were blacklisted by the United Nations. In 1984, Queen played shows at Sun City in South Africa. As this was during the apartheid era, the United Nations had asked entertainers to boycott the country. Queen decided to play there anyway, and as a result, were placed on a United Nations blacklist. Fact 33, Freddie fell down a flight of stairs while on stage. While performing a show in 1984, Freddie fell down a flight of stairs and injured his knee. He was carried to the piano and played three more songs before being rushed to hospital. Fact Fact 34, Freddie refused to tour the US. In the film, Freddie makes an off-the-cuff remark about never touring the US again after their video is banned there. This was actually true, as Queen would never tour the US after 1982. Fact 35, the Freddie and Jim storyline is almost entirely fictional. In the film, Jim Hutton is working as a waiter at one of Freddie's parties. This and the majority of what follows of this storyline is not true. In reality, Jim met Freddie at a bar in the mid 80s, and initially he declined Freddie's advances. They would later meet again, and this time Jim accepted Freddie's offer to buy him a drink. Fact 36, Queen were on tour two months before live in the film, as the band reunite for Live Aid, they mention that they haven't played together for years. In reality, Queen had only finished their The Works tour two months before Live Aid. Fact 37, Queen played three more songs at Live Aid. 
While the movie's recreation of Live Aid is spectacular, it's also heavily cut down. Queen actually played another two songs that day, Crazy Little Thing Called Love and We Will Rock You, which while cut from the film, can be found on the DVD and Blu-ray release. In addition to this, Brian and Freddie returned to the Live Aid stage later that night to perform Is This The World We Created. Fact 38, Freddie was diagnosed two years after Live Aid. In the movie, Freddie receives his AIDS diagnosis prior to Live Aid. In reality, it wasn't until 1987 two years after Live Aid, that Freddie was actually diagnosed. Fact 39. After Live Aid, Queen recorded four more albums. While the movie ends at Live Aid, that wasn't the end of the Queen story. Freddie passed away six years after Live Aid, and in that time, Queen would go on a European tour and record four more albums, three of which were released before Freddie's death. While Freddie would also release a second solo album. That sounds like sequel potential to me. Thanks for watching the video guys. Remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel.